Hello everyone, this is the first lecture of Automaton and Computational Theory. First, we're going to give an overview of what the material we're going to cover in this lecture. First, we're going to talk about Automaton Theory. In this section, we're going to talk about finite automaton and its relationship with regular expression, pushdown automaton, linear bounded automaton, and Turing machine. Next, we're going to talk about grammars, which is the syntax programming languages. We're going to talk about four types of grammars. There is type 0, type 1, type 2, type 3. We're going to talk about their relationship between automaton, the four automaton we covered in the first section. And then we're going to talk about the theory of computation. Mainly, we're going to talk about what problems can be solved by program. Next, we're going to look at the speed of computation. We're going to talk about P and NP, what problems can be solved in polynomial time. Before we dive into the automaton theory, we're going to first talk about sets. So set is a collection of objects that doesn't allow repetition, um, repetitions, and the order of the elements in the set doesn't matter. For example, the set 1, 2, 3 is equal to the set 1, 3, 2. Of course, we have empty set which doesn't have any elements. And the number of sets will use this symbol to represent the number of elements in the set. For example, the number of elements in the set 1, 2 is 2. There are a few operations we can use on sets. So first, we're going to talk about a union. A union mean, A union B means that we pick an element. This element belongs to A, or this element become, belongs to B. We use this symbol to represent member of. This means X is a member of set A. And the second, if we use a diagram, then A union B means that this is union, this is the set A, this is the set B. So basically, A union B means cover both of the sets. Second, A intersection with B. Intersect with B, meaning we pick an element which X belongs to A and X belongs to B. So if we use a diagram to represent A and B, we find A intersect with B, meaning this section. So it's the section the union intersect with each other. The next we're going to talk about A minus B. So it means we pick an element which belongs to A but it doesn't belong to B. So in this diagram, we can see the part that A intersect with B is removed because this element belongs to B at the same time. Only this small section that outside B but also belongs to A is representing A minus B. And it can be written as A dash b. Next, we're going to talk about what is a language. A language is a set of strings over alphabet. So what is alphabet? Alphabet is a finite set of symbols. We use sigma usually to represent alphabet. For example, we can talk about a, b, c is, a sim is an alphabet, 0, 9 is an alphabet, 0, 1 is an alphabet. So it's just a finite set in essence. And a string over the alphabet, sigma, is a finite sequence of symbols from sigma. So for example, for 0, 1, we say that 0, 1, 0 is a finite set of symbols from sigma. So it is a valid string defined over the sigma alphabet. So next, we're going to look at sigma star. This is a very important concept. It is a set of all finite long strings defined over the alphabet. So for example, if alphabet is 0, 1, then 0, 1 star is empty string. We use this symbol to represent empty string. 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, and this set can contain many elements. And we use two vertical lines to represent the lengths of the string. So for example, 0, 1, 0 is 3, and the empty string, the length, is equal to 0. Since we talk about string, there is another operation we can use for strings, meaning concatenation. So for example, if x is string, y is a string, x concatenated with y can be written as xy. Real examples are as follows. 0, 1, 0 concatenated with 1, 1 can be written as 0, 1, 0, 1, 1. And 0, 1, 0 concatenated with empty string is just 0, 1, 0. This is the, no matter what, strings that uh, can concatenate with empty string is still itself. So now we look at 
a string. We, we now we know a language is just we usually use L to you uh, to represent the language. A uh, language L defined over the alphabet is a subset of sigma star. Because again, sigma star is the collection, a set of all finite long strings defined over sigma. So if we use a diagram to represent the relationship between a language and a sigma star, a sigma star is a language is just a subset of the sigma star. This is the language L. And we can define concatenation. Um, we can define concatenation between two languages too. So say L1 and L2 are two languages. The concatenation between these two languages, meaning that we pick a string from x1 from l1, and we pick a string l x2 from l2, and then the concatenation between these two, two strings is one element in this set, the concatenation between l1 and l2. For example, ABBB is l1, ABBB is l2, and the concatenation between these two languages can be written as ABA, so it's ABA, and BBA, and ABBB, and also BBBB. So we can further extend the concept. So L, um, L concatenated with L itself can be written L2. L1 concatenated with L2, we can omit the symbol, just simply write it as L1, L2. L3 is just L concatenated with L2. And we can interchange the the sequence order of these two, um, L L and L two, and we can write as L L L concatenated with each other, and follow the same principle. L K is just L concatenated with itself in K times. L zero is just a, a set containing a empty string. L one is just itself. L star is L zero concatenated with L one, L two, L three. The now, basically the union between these sets. And in contrast, that L star is L, L2, L3, the union of between these sets. So remember the difference between these two is that L star has L0, which is a set containing empty string in it.